Mounting yard for the first of our Group 1s, the Sportsbet Australasian Oaks for the three-year-old fillies over 2,000 metres. And we start with the New Zealand Oaks winner, Paul Cretudinus. She's now changed stables with the Waterhouse and Bot team. She's been purchased by Yulong Stud. She was fantastic winning the New Zealand Oaks where she sat midfield and ran on. She was fantastic to start before that over 2,000 metres where she did the same. She is absolutely gorgeous, this girl. She just had a little bounce here and there. I'm not concerned about that at all. Her coat looks like silk. She is rock hard fit. It's a flawless parade. Wings of Song has been a winning machine. She's won seven races and she's still just a three-year-old out of uh, 12 starts. She was super last start winning the Auraria. She's travelled into it beautifully and had that race won on the home turn. If she brings that form, she's right in it. What a mighty filly she is. And I tell you what, to look at her, she's nothing special. She really isn't. She's very plain looking. She's athletic. She's got a good body, but she's definitely no supermodel. But hey, what a racehorse she is. She's presented so well. She looks very healthy. Her fitness is right there and she's moving well and nice and composed. Second of the New Zealanders is Positivity for Andrew Forsman. Ran second to Paul Cretudinus last start over 2,400 metres, but was beaten on her merits. Prior to that, she kicked back and beat Kuali Alpha Russia. She looks like she's got an each-way chance. Yeah, big scopey kind of girl, this one. She's just getting a little bit up and about there. I don't know if that's normal for her, my first time assessing her in Australia, but she looks really nice and fit. Her coat's impeccable. Sarah Sana comes over from Victoria with the Griffiths and de Kock team. Uh, probably a query at 2,000 metres, but they rode her further back last start and she did finish on over, over a mile. At her best, she's a good filly. Uh, she's presented beautifully. My query is type-wise. I think that there's other more athletic fillies that I'd definitely say we're going to run this sort of trip out. So for me, she looks fantastic, but it's a query just based on type. Bit of a forgotten horse in the market is Queen of Dragons for the Snowdens. She comes out of some strong form races. Two starts ago, she uh, won at black type level at Kembla Grange. Last start, I thought she was pretty good in the AJC Oaks, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Vinery Stud Stakes. Uh, she's running up against some of the, uh, the top quality horses in New South Wales. She'll put herself on speed, must have a chance. Oh, she looks fantastic, this girl. The Norton bit goes on today too, and they'd be wanting her to settle with that going on. She's so calm and relaxed here. That's got to be a good sign. Vibrant Sun was great at the Valley last start when she started double-figure odds but powered to the line after settling just behind the leaders. A repeat of that run would give her a good chance and she looks like she'll stay. Looks fantastic. Once again, as you'd expect in this kind of race, really deep girth on this girl. Coat's in fantastic order. In the sports bed, Oaks, Molly Nickers has been a friend of the bookmakers lately. She's been right in the market at her past six, but unable to win any. She continues to race very well, though, and last start again was solid when third to Wings of Song. Beautiful, big, scopey type of staying filly, this. I think that she's got plenty of room there through her girth. She looks fantastic in the skin, and her fitness is spot on. Coco Sun for the McAvoys is a much improved filly this preparation. Her two starts this preparation, she has savaged the line. Firstly at Sandown over 1,400, backed it up last start at Bendigo over a mile for an even more impressive win. Last prep, she was tried at staying distances and came up short. She's going a lot better now. Jeez, there's plenty of her. She's such a thick, chunky kind of a girl. For me, like I, I'd probably prefer some of the more athletic types, but she looks immaculate. The third of the New Zealand trio is Kuali Al-Farasha. She's uh, bringing solid form in uh, across the ditch here. She was good three starts ago, winning a maiden extremely well. Two starts ago, over 2,100 metres, looked the winner before positivity kicked back inside her to beat her. Lovely type of staying filly, this very athletic, deep girth. You can see it sort of tucks away up towards her flank there. She's very fit. I like this filly a lot. Quickster has been in great form. Two starts ago, she came over to SA and won the clear Lindop. Again, last start, second to Wings of Song, but lost no admirers when she was trapped three wide, no cover throughout. Being, being by uh, Seamus Award, you'd expect her to get the trip, and she's rock hard fit. Yeah, really faultless parade from Quickster today. I think that she's presented in really nice order. The next horse is uh, Concello for Chris Waller. This filly has been racing very well over in New South Wales and comes out of a form race which is very strong, the Adrian Knox Stakes. Got a long way back, ran on really strongly to run third there. That was off the back of an impressive win at Hawkesbury. James McDonald in the saddle. Yeah, that's a big tick, isn't it? And me looking at her, it's another tick. She looks fantastic. Coat's in good order. She's nice and calm there with two strappers and earmuffs on. She's walking around beautifully. Her action's great. 
Another filly to make the trip over in uh, chase of the big prize money from New South Wales is Private Legacy. Another horse to come out of the Adrian Knox. She was beaten comfortably by Concello, but she covered ground and raced rear in the field. She's got solid form in some decent races, and you're getting a price about her. This is a really nice parade from this filly. I think that she's presented perfectly by the team. She's a good size. There's substance. Her attitude is excellent for this kind of a trip, and her coat's lovely and healthy as well. Big thrill for Shay Keating from Ballarat to have a runner in the Group 1 Oaks, and Into You certainly deserves her place. Uh, she's been racing very well just in her first campaign of racing. Did have her chance, though, in a field of four last start at Sandown. Good luck to Shay. She's only got a small team, and i tell you one thing with this girl. You know that she's going to run out the trip, no problem. She presents really well. I wish them well. The autumn bell for Henry Dwyer has been over in SA campaigning. She was good two starts ago when second behind Quickster. Midfield last start behind Wings of Song. I have to think some of the others have their measure. Yeah, she's very unassuming, not the biggest horse in the yard. She's been presented well by the team, but there are others that I prefer. Bond Mistress is another horse to come out of the area, and she was pretty well handled coming ninth. I can't see her turning that around. She'd win a walking race, I tell you that. She's got the biggest walk in the mounting yard today. She really powers through the ground. She's been presented really well, so if you like her, I can't fault her. And to round out the field is Infinity Imperial, another Victorian, and she comes into this after winning a staying maiden at Pakenham. She looks like she'll make the grade, but this is a massive rising class. It is a massive rising class, but she's been presented really nicely. She's being a little show-off there, flicking her toes. She looks fantastic in order. In a very deep Oaks and a very uh, decent addition of this Oaks, I've gone 1, 2, 10 and 6. So I've been really impressed with the, watching the videos of Paul Cretudinus from New Zealand. Well, I'm hoping she can bring that form here in front of Wings of Song, who's been outstanding in her last couple of months of racing. Rounding out my tips are Quickster and Vibrant uh, Sun, who you're getting decent odds about both of. Now for Amy's top 10 in the Oaks. It's a very, very tough race, this. I'm with you. I'm with the one. I can't say the name, so I'm not going to butcher it. But I think that the one looks fantastic. She's a quality filly. Um, Wings of Song looks fantastic as well. Uh, Molly Nickers, I was taken by her. And I also think um, the Kuali Al Farasha. I thought that that horse looked fantastic as well. So, hey, super tough race. But I've gone with the one, which I can't pronounce. So, yes, runners are about to start loading here for the Sportsbet Australasian Oaks. Group 1 level worth a million dollars. First of the runners just going up into line now. It's a race with so much history, even though it only was first run in 1982, won by Rose of Kingston, who that year went on to become the Australian Race Horse of the Year, trained by Bob Hoisted. 1983, first year it was won as a Group 1. Bart Cummings won it with Royal Regatta. Bart would go on to win the race another three times. He shares the record with Lee Friedman, four wins apiece. Ross McDonald actually won this race on three occasions. Of course, Ross's son, Clinton, just winning the big feature at Caulfield, the showdown with the first starter, Stanley Express. And it is certainly, John, a race where um, it's a race which is more than held its own on the Group 1 calendar. It has, and it continues to do so. I, I like the quality we've got in the field today, and that, that increased prize money has definitely attracted horses, uh, many from New South Wales, and importantly, I think those three from uh, New Zealand who come out of the placings in the New Zealand Oaks. Fantastic to see them having a crack over here. It's a deep race. There'll be good form coming out of it, and it's a race that uh, punters are having a lot of trouble working out who should run favourite. It's a very wide betting market, as we've seen all day. Piers like Wings of Song will run the popular pick though, trained by Patrick Payne already having a big day with a training double here today. Of course Patrick won the Group 1 derby last year with Dunn Curley's first Group 1 winner. Can he win the Oaks with Wings of Song with Jake Noonan in the saddle. Jake's only Group 1 success when he won the Sangster on Precious Gem here a number of years ago. So they are the combination with the favourite, Brett Davis ready for us. This is the Sportsbet Australasian Oaks. See to come forward, Queen of Dragons, Quickster, the Autumn Bell, Kuali Al Faraja. So the New Zealand Oaks form on display here in South Australia today. Paul Cretudina standing well. So too positivity. Kuali Al Faraja still to move in. The Autumn Bell comes forward, Quickster and Private Legacy. So we're pretty close. The Australasian Oaks, $5. Wings of Song. Queen of Dragons to come up with Private Legacy. So it'll be the Sydney Galloper who's last to move into the gates. 
Private Legacy coming forward. The other young ladies are well behaved. Three-year-old fillies, Australasian Oaks. Wings of Song will start a marginal favourite. Set to run 2,000 metres and they're off and racing. Queen of Dragons stepped nicely, as did Sarah Sana. Not bad away as well was Coco Sun and Paul Krichudinus is certainly wanting to be in the first couple. Vibrant Sun zooming across and deeper out, Infinity Imperial also pressing forward. Bond Mistress, Wings of Song. So there's plenty charging forward and wanting to get nearer the front rather than the back. And Vibrant Sun for Zara presses right on into the back. 1500 metres to run. Vibrant Sun is the leader by two and three quarter lengths on Paul Krichudinus in second. Third position, Infinity Imperial. Two and a half to three lengths back, Coco Sun, Queen of Dragon, Sarasana, then Bond Mistress. Two to Wings of Song, who's midfield, nine off the speed alongside of Concello. Then Private Legacy, Positivity ridden back with Into You, Quickster, Molly Nickers, Kwali Alpha Raja, and the Autumn Bell sees nothing but backsides. They're in the back straight, now the side of the track, a thousand to run. And the leader is Vibrant Sun, steadies the ship by a length. Second position, Infinity Imperial. Paul Krichudinus is very close today. She's running third, only two from the speed. The speed's solid because they're four in front of Coco Sun, Queen of Dragons, Bond Mistress, Sarasana, Concello, Wings of Song, Positivity. The next one then is Private Legacy, followed by Into You, Molly Nickers, Quickster, Towards the back, Kuali Alpha Raja and the Autumn Bell. They hot it up now, 500 metres out. And the leader still, Vibrant Sun. But Paul Krichudinus has quickly ranged up to join her. And they've paired off. They're three in front of Coco Sun. Then Bond Mistress. Vibrant Sun in for the fight. Regained the lead from Paul Krichudinus. Vibrant Sun a half. Three quarters on Paul Krichudinus. Then Coco Sun. Running on from the back, Private Legacy, Vibrant Sun, Coco Sun's having a last ditch effort, Vibrant Sun from Coco Sun, Vibrant Sun held on, Vibrant Sun just in the Australasian Oaks from either Private Legacy or Coco Sun, Wings of Song fourth, then Paul Krichudinus, Quickster, Molly Nick has made ground, Positivity, Queen of Dragons, the next one in then was Concello from the Autumn Bell into you. Towards the back is Sarasana with Kwali Al Faraja. Vibrant Sun has fought them all off to score here. Gee, that Hickman horse was closing in late, Private Legacy, but it's just missed. And this has certainly been a game win, John, by number six, Vibrant Sun, Mark Zara for Mick Price and Michael Kent Jr. From barrier to box, basically, Vibrant Sun has just snuck in after making all the running. Travel, uh, sorry, uh, tackled strongly by Paul Crutunius on the home turn. Her fitness probably just go, uh, gave out late, and it was left to Coco Sun and then Private Legacy to make a dive. But Vibrant Sun, after winning so impressively at Mooney Valley last start, has raised the bar and is now a group one winner private, private legacy massive from the second half of the field one more stride she wins the Oaks and Coco Sun very honest after being given the run of the race by Jamie Carr. Wings of Song runs fourth so it's 6 12 8 and 2 Mark Zara of course he rides the favourite in the next the group one sangster Estriella for Kieran Mark He's been having a great day, Mark Zara. He's uh, one of the nation's leading riders, and he's judged that to perfection. They were running at a nice, even tempo, but he's left enough in the tank to get home. You could see that he was still cuddling the horse on the home turn, and those gaps that he'd established behind him came back to help him because it was too hard for those horses from the middle of the back of the pack to get into the race. Beautifully judged ride by Vi Vibrant Sun and Mark Zara. Well trained, of course, by the Price and Kent combination. There, yeah, Michael Kent Jr. on track representing the combination today. We'll have him with us shortly. We might even get Mark Zara before we get Michael Kent Jr. The way it's playing out at the moment, John. He's already back, the winner. Uh, so fantastic uh, addition of the Oaks, and I'm sure that will end up being a strong form race. They've obviously gone at decent tempo because they have run home their last 600 in over 36 and a half. So it was made a staying test, but Mark Zara did have that uh, horse, Vibrant Sun, in a beautiful cruising rhythm. 
and Paul Coutinus was happy just to tuck in behind the filly and let her just cart, uh, cart it up and uh, yeah, as a result the rest of the field were left four or five lengths off those two on the home turn and that was the winning move from Zara. Remarkable result with the autumn sun with the trifecta here John. Michael Ken Jr with us right now. Michael, uh, group one victory for this filly, start number seven. Tell me about your initial thoughts with her because back in the spring, four runs and still a maiden. Yeah, we always always liked her, Terry. Um, won a maiden by seven lengths, went to the guineas. Well done, Mark. Congratulations. Um, look, third up, 2,000 metres, straight to the front. Huge effort by the filly. Missed a run in the Auraria, had a little setback. Um, so massive job by the whole team back at home. I'm wrapped for them. Rap for the owners, and uh, yeah, what a gutsy effort by the, by the filly. Huge, huge run. And certainly had it really served up to her in the early part of the home straight when she finally beat off the former Kiwi filly now with Gay and Adrian. She was there like with, you know, anything to run over the top of her. Yeah, she was there to be beaten. And um, as I said, third, third run preparation. Um, yeah, hu huge effort. So, um, yeah, awesome for the result for everybody. Yeah. Um, does she go to Queensland? Uh, we'll just take stock and talk to everybody. She's put in a massive effort today. She doesn't have to go anywhere now. She's a Group 1 winner, so um, we'll work it out on Monday morning. OK, Mark Zara, the winning rider. Mark, uh, what a gutsy win by this girl. Yeah, really gutsy. She, I couldn't have her much slower in the run. You know, I took my time getting there, but that's as steady as I'll get her going. You were rolling along a bit, but she's got a good high cruising speed. Dropped me rain halfway down the straight. I was cursing that, and I couldn't pick it up. It was too long, but... You know, I just kept riding around. It was a good gutsy win, the top of it from the team. Um, and certainly Tim Clark really served it up to you from the top of the home straight. Yeah, that's what you expect from the Waterhouse runners, but he's taken on a uh, you know a pair of trainers that have their horses pretty fit too. OK, and um, they were closing in late. Was she out on her feet? Probably a little bit. Uh, she's entitled to be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the replay, you talk about dropping the rain. Is it one that you won't watch? Uh, well, I won a couple of cup drop in the rain, so it still counts, but um, not ideal, but riding light today, so uh, a win's a win. OK, good luck getting the double in the next, mate, on Estriella. Thanks, Terry. Cheers. There we go, Mark Zara.